Hi, my name is Randy Helms. I'm going to be your instructor today. We're going to be looking at ways of creating interactive lesson activities using Smart Notebook 11. Our learning objective for the day is going to be that you'll understand the three basic techniques for hide and reveal, and that you'll be able to use at least one of them to create an interactive lesson in your classroom. As I'm going through the presentation, kind of note the, the way I move from side to side and try to keep my way out, uh, out of, in front of the, uh, the smart board here. That's to make sure that everyone can see what's going on at all times. So we're going to talk about creating a hide and reveal activity, and there are three separate ways we do this. One is a move and reveal, and the move and reveal is uh, to move an object out from in front of one and have another object and reveal it. The order and reveal is to move uh, is to set the order front or back of an object so that you can use it to highlight something that you want to highlight. And erase and reveal actually uh, covers over an object with something and you erase it off of it to reveal the object. Three basic techniques. I'm going to show you what those look like now. So, how would you use it? Well, you'd ask the question, where is King Tut's tomb? And you can see we have a rectangle here that's sitting and it's actually covering what we, our answer. And we move it down and it says, the Valley of the Kings. Again, notice I put my finger in the bottom left hand corner. I don't try to get up too high and move things around. We have a rectangle down here and this is the order and color hide and reveal. And if I move it over that box, you can see, again, the Valley of the Kings. One last time, the erase and reveal. Where is King Tut's tomb? I've got I've got text down here, but I covered over it with a pen, and now I can use the eraser tool, or I can go up there and, use, and click on the eraser tool and do it with my hand. But if I use the eraser tool and I move it across, you see it says the Valley of the King. So we've got move and reveal, order and reveal, and erase and reveal. There are a number of different reasons why you might want to do this with students. Um, the first one would be, creates anticipation. So students, you ask the question and they are waiting for the answer. They know it's there, but they just can't take their little eyes off the screen because they know it's about to be revealed. You also have uh, providing think time for students. So as you're doing a lesson, you would ask the question, the answer's up here, but you ask students to stop and think about it, maybe pair share with each other, and then you reveal the answer. Another reason is that it allows for visual, kinesthetic, and auditory learners. Visual in that they can see the answer. Kinesthetic, they can actually come up here and reveal the answer themselves. And auditory, we always say the answer out loud and talk about it. So it brings in all of those modalities. And finally, it's just fun. This is a, uh, a way of keeping students engaged in the lesson at all times. They really understand, they really will pay more attention and actively be involved in the lesson. I built a small one just to show you how it works here. And so, how does it work? Well, the first thing I did was hide the question with a, an erase and reveal. And my question is, where was the first manned airplane flight made? Think about it. Share with your neighbor, write it on your whiteboard. The answer is Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. So that is a very simple um, order and reveal lesson that you can put together for your own uh, presentations. All right, we're going to walk through how that works now. First thing we need to do is create a page. Page creation is done on the side tab at the bottom. There is a, a little icon at the bottom, looks like a piece of paper. It's got a little green plus on it. You click that and it will create a new page. Below it is a piece of paper with a red X on it and that will delete the page. We have our page here. We want to create our question first. At the top of the page in the toolbar, we have an A with a red line under it. That creates text and that's what we want to do now is create text. Once we click on that, we have our contextual panel come up. And in the contextual panel, we have a lot of different choices. We can decide which type we want. We can decide how big it is. 
I'm going to make it 28. Uh, we can decide where we want it, but really, once I've picked that, I'm going to take the, uh, the default here, which is uh, the, uh, the, this particular icon right here. Now that we have it selected, I'm going to take my finger, put it on the page, and drag it across. That creates my text box. Now we've got to get text in there. Well, we have a couple of choices. We can type it on our keyboard at our desk, or we can write it up here by using the online, the onboard keyboard. And that is in the pen panel at the bottom, the pen tray at the bottom. On the left-hand side is a little icon that looks like a, a keyboard. Press on that, and that will bring up your keyboard. I'm going to turn my back on you for a second, something you should try not to do. But uh, let's see if I can do it from this side show you how it works. So here's cap and we want to write where was the first man flight. So we have our question in. Now I want to be able to manipulate this so I can go back up to the toolbar and you see our selector tool at the top here. Click on our selector tool, drops our contextual panel, allows me to come over here, drop my, uh, my keyboard, and now I can select the text. <clears throat> And you see I have a little, a little uh, round circle here at the end. I can make it a little bit bigger so that I can get it all on one line. There it is. And if I want to, I can move it around a little bit. i got to click off and then grab it. I can move it around, put it right where I want it. Okay, where was the first man flight? Next, I'm going to create my answer. So again, I go back up to the contact to the uh, tool panel at the top, select text, which is the A with the little red line under it. Select the one I've been using already because I want to keep it consistent and go over here and make it 28. Now I'm going to create my text box right about here. And I'm going to type in my answer by, again, bringing up the keyboard, which I do in the pen tray at the bottom by pressing on the icon. And the answer is K-I-T-T-Y-H-A-W. Capital N O R T H space capital C A R O L I N A. Again, go back up to the top, my selection tool. Get rid of my keyboard, and I have my answer. So, I'm going to select it here because I kind of want to move it up. I kind of want to move it over a little bit. And there it is. I've got to remember where it's at. Very important to remember where it's at because the next thing I'm going to do is make it invisible. I do that by up in the top right hand corner of the text box is a little drop down window. When I hit that, a lot of choices come up, and there are a lot of things you can do here, but those are different lessons. We're going to concentrate on this time as properties. When I hit properties, it brings up a whole selection for me here over right next to uh, my side panel. In this, what I'm interested in, there's four at the top, fill effects, textile, object animation, page recording. I am interested in textile. It defaulted to that, but I'm going to select it anyway. And now I'm going to go down and tech 
and choose the color I want. I want my color to match the background. So I'm going to pick this one in the right hand corner and my text disappears. Now I know where that is. My next step is to create my object. So, again at the top in the toolbar, I'm going to come over to this side, in the toolbar, right next to the selector tool, there's a icon that has a ball and a circle in it, uh, a circle and a square in it. Select that and you'll see you get a whole different selection in the contextual panel. What we're looking for is a rectangle, so which is the third one over here. I'm going to select rectangle at the top and now I can draw my rectangle. I'm going to draw it in right here. You want to make sure you draw it big enough so it'll cover your text. So there we have it. Have my rectangle drawn. I'm going to go up to my selector again. Select it. It brings up, and now I have for fill, I have uh, things I can do with my rectangle. I, there are two things here, fill effects, page recording. I'm interested, it defaults to no fill. I'm interested in solid fill. Oh. Okay. I made a mistake here. need to select my box first. Or it doesn't know what I'm talking about. So, again, fill effects. I'm going to select solid fill. Fills my box with blue. Blue. I could choose other colors if I wanted to. It has a whole. It has a whole palette down here. But I'm fine with that. So now I've selected that. I have my box full. But if I move it now, I get nothing. And that's because it's on top of my. It's uh, on top of my text. So what I want to do is select it. Go to my drop down window here. Again, all of these come up. This time I'm interested in order. Order is right here. It's about five up from the bottom. I select order, and it gives me a couple of choices here. What I want to do is send it to the back. So, I've sent it to the back. Now, it should be behind my text, and when I move it down, it should reveal it. So, you've built it. You've made your text invisible. You've created your, your uh, cover box, and you ask the question, where was the first man flight? Students, think about it for a second. Share with your partner. Yes, that's right. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. So, this is how we create a, an order and reveal technique to make your lessons more interactive. I'm sure you'll find lots of uses for this in your classroom. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson and we'll see you next time.